me. So uh, this talk is about sound, so it's very important for me to check that you're able to hear me. So we all are in, in some ways uh, surrounded by air medium around us, right? Air is uh, on the left side, on the right side, behind you, in front of you. So, and when I'm speaking to you, what is happening that I'm creating a disturbance in this air medium, and this disturbance is going to, to your ears, and uh, the mechanical structures inside your ears are sensing this vibration, and you are able to hear me what I'm saying. And uh, your, the mechanical structure is so sophisticated that uh, if I pause, you immediately listen that I'm not speaking. Right? If I use, increase my speed of speaking or I, if I decrease my loudness, you immediately sense and uh, this is one of the marvels of nature that uh, the, the sensitivity of our ear, hearing is so precise that it happens so quickly. And uh, uh, coming back to me and you all, uh, while I'm speaking, you can imagine that the scenario is like you are in an ocean of air, and uh, while you are in this ocean, there's a wave created while I'm speaking, and this wave is going to your ears, right? And you are able to listen to what I'm talking about. And, uh, and uh, this all process uh, is happening even if you close your eyes. And you don't need to see me, and still you'll be able to hear whether I'm on the left side of the stage or on the right side of the stage. You can experiment right now itself. So, uh, and uh, further going into you listening to my speech only, we can see, we can, uh, we can say that uh, uh, you are able to listen to my gender, uh, you are able to listen to my emotional state, you're able to listen my, uh, to my physical status, whether, whether I'm exhausted right now or I'm uh, uh, speaking in a uh, normal voice, or you're able to say whether I am, uh, which part of India I come from. Some of you may be able to guess. And this all you're able to guess just by listening to my voice. And you do not just right now, but even if somebody calls you on phone and the moment they say you hello, you are able to guess whether the, what is the gender of the person and, and all this information impacts how you interpret the final message you are listening to. Uh, and uh, whether I say hello or I say hello, this can impact how the following sentences I say are sensed by you and how do you interpret them. So this all is happening uh, uh, date, uh, all the while while you are listening to these sounds. And there's a group of researchers around the world which, who are interested in understanding how human brain does this task, and how, how me as a speaker is also encoding these attributes into these sound signals. And uh, how and when does the brain you do this task, and how does the brain use this information to interpret what messages it is listening to. And uh, I belong to one such group, and uh, we in our lab uh, do design experiments to understand the, uh, the way the brain is listening to these sounds and how can we quantify scientifically that what is going on uh, in the brain when uh, we decipher these attributes of the sound signals. So uh, what I'll talk to you about is some two studies which we uh, did uh, recently to understand some aspects of uh, human uh, sound processing. And these, uh, uh, first of all, this study is uh, focused on talker change detection. And uh, the scenario uh, here is that you're listening to a conversation, and there are multiple speakers talking in that conversation. And uh, this can happen in a podcast, like an audio podcast you're listening to whether, where a person is interviewing another person, or you're listening to a TV debate. And uh, we ask the question, how, how quickly do, does a listener perceive there's a change in the talker when you're listening to these, uh, these sound signals? And this is important because if you don't parse this uh, sound recording into who is speaking when, then the whole conversation will not make sense. If there's a debate going on, you don't know who spoke what, so you are not able to make an idea what is going on in the debate. So humans are very good at this task of uh, trying to figure out who spoke when in a continuous uh, recording of audio signal. So we uh, did this task uh, in a laboratory setup where we uh, asked human subjects to come in and listen to audio recordings in which there were uh, synthet synthetically we changed the speaker at different locations in these audio recordings. And we asked the human subject to uh, give us an indication as soon as they think that the speaker has changed in these audio recordings. And we quantify this aspect called reaction time. How quickly do you perceive that the speaker has changed? 
And uh, uh, reaction time is something uh, uh, we, we know, we are quite familiar with. Like uh, suppose uh, a sports person is uh, playing or hitting a football, then how quickly does it, the goal key respond to uh, the football, right? The so same thing we are asking in this context of listening to the sound. So if you're listening to the sound and there's a speaker change, how quickly do you detect that there's a speaker change? And the time response happens to be close to 600 milliseconds. So here in the plot, you will see uh, the y-axis corresponds to the predicted reaction time, which we predict using our own algorithms. And the x-axis corresponds to the actual reaction time of the human subjects in this experiment. So if, the, if all the dots lie along y equal to x line, then we are doing very well in terms of prediction. So we see that uh, we are able to predict uh, not quite well, but it's better than what is state of the art in this uh, uh, domain. And uh, the reaction time happens to be around 600 milliseconds, and this is quite small. And, uh, and, uh, and this is required, right? Uh, if you don't re detect very quickly when the talker has changed, you will not be able to move your head if you are in a conversation or some weird things can happen. And uh, further, uh, on top of that, we were able to show which features in the audio recordings help to detect talker change by the human subjects. So that's why we are able to predict it quite well in this plot. So in another study, we asked the question, is talker change detection impacted by familiarity with the language? Suppose you are listening to uh, uh, imagine a language, for instance, Chinese language. You are not, suppose you are not familiar with Chinese speech. Will you be able to detect that there's a change in the talker in this recording? So, so we uh, did this experiment again in the lab setup where we had uh, 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 subjects from India. They were familiar with English but not with Chinese. And we asked them this question of uh, detect the talker change in these recordings. And some of these recordings were English recordings, some of these were Chinese recordings. And we found that the reaction time for talker change detection falls significantly for Chinese recordings. So then when we think about it, what is going on? So likely when you understand the speech, then you're, uh, you, some part of your uh, speech processing brain is going into understanding the speech and it's not completely being used to detect uh, the talker change. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, whereas when you don't know the language, the whole, uh, what ta the only influence you are having is of the talker attributes of the signal. So, so in a way, uh, you can imagine that what is uh, the sound signal is like an uh, like Indian food plate, where you have rice, you have curry, you have, uh, uh, you have some dessert also. And what you eat is depending upon what you like, all right? So if you, if you are like, if you are familiar with the curry, then you'll eat the curry. And if you're not familiar with the curry, like the language here, then you're not using that language to interpret what is going on. So, and uh, so uh, following up, we did another study in which we asked the question, can we detect the health status of an individual from audio recordings? And in this uh, uh, question, uh, we were uh, favored by the context uh, which was going on. And we got this idea in 2020 when there was a pandemic outbreak. And we thought that maybe it was a good exercise to document the cough recordings of uh, human subjects during that phase. So we created a website which we released publicly and we asked volunteers to go there and record their cough and speech sounds. And along with recording the cough and speech sounds, we also asked them to report their symptoms. And without getting into the privacy aspect of reporting their name or anything else. So all this data was stored in our server. And thanks to the citizens of science around the world, we were able to get around 2,200 subjects record their data on this website. So, so this was a very unique data set, which we also released publicly. So currently people from several universities are using this data set to understand what is going on these cough recordings. And we followed this study with trying to understand, can we detect COVID-19 from these audio recordings? So imagine uh, current scenario, uh, if we go for a COVID-19 test, we have to do a RT-PCR test, which is not very comfortable, right? You have to take a swab sample and you have to wait for uh, one day to uh, or few hours to a day or more, depending upon which city in India you do this test. And if you have a flight next day to catch, then you try to plan how to do this test effectively. Should I, if I miss the test report, what will happen? So imagine if all this can happen through just a mobile phone. You speak into the phone, you cough into it, and the mobile phone gives you an update, oh, likely COVID-19. Kindly uh, don't fly today or give it a gap. Don't put your mask today because uh, you seem to have some symptoms of COVID-19. So this was our idea. So we uh, built this algorithm 
and we tried uh, the, we uh, found that performance of this algorithm is better than chance on our data set. So this also we released as a public tool. It is not yet approved by uh, the, uh, the health ministry so far. But uh, all our research papers are out there uh, documenting how much fine, uh, what is the performance on detection and et cetera. So uh, following it up, uh, uh, encouraged by this, uh, what uh, we think right now in this age of machine learning and artificial intelligence, can your voice help analyze your health? Uh, and uh, uh, an analogy I like to draw is again, that uh, suppose you have a phone right now, you may be getting notification that there will be windy conditions outside uh, uh, thanks to the satellite data which is collected. So what if uh, your voice can be used to analyze your, the weather inside your body? Can you say uh, that there's a phlegm building up in your body and hence wear a jacket today? Or don't eat uh, cold food today maybe because uh, you may be, uh, you are getting some respiratory ailment. So, so this is the idea that uh, can voice be used to analyze the health directly? And, uh, and uh, why we are excited about this is because uh, uh, currently uh, we all are uh, consuming more and more digital data and also we are contributing to more and more digital data. For instance, you talk on phone, you have video meetings, you take photographs. So all this is contributing to enormous amount of digital data around us. And, uh, and voice has, is one such aspect which has evolved over thousands of years to be used effective, for effective human communication. Right? So if you don't speak to anybody, it's uh, very likely that we'll be able to convey our emotions that effectively. So uh, what if the humans, uh, the machines also get that capability? If machines are able to interact with us the way hu a, a human interacts with us, and we think a voice is one key at aspect in that. So, uh, so that is our one goal, that we can enhance human-machine interaction if we understand this, uh, this uh, uh, voice aspect in more detail and also understand the sound as the different aspects of sound in more detail. So uh, with this I'd like to end that the, the curious case of sound continues to amaze uh, researchers and engineers and several scientists and, uh, and I think the future is bright for all of us uh, once we are able to decipher this uh, curious case in more and more depth. Thank you.